Hi guys and welcome back to another Hi guys and welcome to the final episode of how to make a Roblox rig series In today's episode we will be finalizing our rig so it's ready for public use and more So let's get started So our first thing that we didn't do during the course was actually to parent this by the head When you rotate the head the settings bone doesn't move with it and so we want that So what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode and we're going to go and go into wireframe x-ray since I'm not I'm not going to put this in front again. And what we're going to do is quite simply hold down on shift and make sure our settings bone is selected and select the head. And then we're going to press control P on our keyboard and click on keep offset in the pop-up that appears. There we go. That's one thing fixed. Now the settings bone moves with it, which is very useful actually. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Next, we'll be fixing modifiers. Actually, during the rigging process, some of the things that we did, uh, we used armature modifiers and we have subdivision modifiers too. And actually, the problem with this is that uh, the armature modifier should be in front. It should be above the subdivision. The armature modifier should be the first thing that Blender thinks of before. Like, it, sh it should be the first thing that Blender thinks of whenever I rotate this. If it thinks about the subdivision modifier, then it's going to look weird. So let me show you. If I turn up the levels to 2, it's broken. It should not look like that. So if we just move the armature modifier above, fixed. And look how nice this bend is. Very cool. So that's what we're going to do on each and every model. We are going to move it up just like that. Oh, sorry. Like that and like that. The head doesn't have an armature modifier though because um, we parented it to the bone and we didn't use vertex groups. So we don't need to do anything about the head. But the rest, now that that's fixed, the bends should look normal. Next thing we're going to add is a low detail mode switch. This, it's it, it's again another more complicated thing. However, uh, I think it's a good thing to show. So let me show you what this is. So currently our model is on zero subdivisions, which I call low detail mode. That's just because I'm a Geometry Dash player. But um, if we turn this up, then it's more on high detail. So what I want to do is I want to add a switch that turns this on and off. So in the settings bone right here, we're going to go to the bone properties and this time we're going to add another property and we're going to call it, uh, let, let's call it, yeah, let's call it low detail mode. In fact, I'm just going to call it low detail and I'm going to change the type to boolean. For the default value, I'm going to leave this unchecked and the description I'm just going to put in changes all viewport subdivisions let's put sub yeah subdivisions i can never spell this correctly uh on the character model to zero and we're just going to press ok and now it's there so i don't really like how it's in the middle of everything so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the gear icon and i'm going to change the name to one low detail and i'm going to put okay now it's showing up in front of everything else and if i expand this a little bit we can see it more this should be unchecked by default so if we right click this and we go to reset the default value it's off so what we're going to do now is right click the checkbox and click on copy as new driver a bit like how we did before and i'm going to go and paste the driver into the viewport levels of the subdivision modifier and i'm going to edit the driver right here I'm going to change the type to scripted expression. All right, so the next thing that we're going to add is character detail. So currently our character detail is on zero because the subdivisions are on zero. So I'm going to add a switch to make this higher. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings bone, go to bone properties and add a new driver right here. More well, a new property, sorry. And I'm going to call this one um, character detail. In fact, I'm going to call it avatar detail. So that it shows up at the start of a list like this. And we're going to change the type to integer because it's going to be a number. And we're going to make the default value. Well, the default value is how many subdivisions we want by default. So by default, I would like, yeah, one subdivision is fine. I feel like two is good too. So I'm going to change it to, yeah, let's leave it on two. And the minimum must be zero because then people can turn it all the way down in case they're lagging and a maximum i'm going to make it three you can also add soft limits which basically means with soft limits you can only change it to a certain point with sliders but if you type it in you can change it to more 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the maximum to 6 because that's the maximum subdivisions you can have. And for the soft limits, I'm going to change the maximum to 3. And for the description, I'm going to put in changes the level of viewport subdivisions on the character model. And I'm going to click on OK. So there it is right there, avatar detail. If I expand that, you can see it more. Um, and if I turn this up to six, you can see it does that, but it doesn't do anything here. So we're going to add a driver for this. So let me just currently, let me just put this to reset uh, to default value. And what you want to do is right click that number slider, value slider. I don't know what it's called. Click on copy as new driver. Click on one of the models right here in object mode. Go to modifier properties and go to levels on the viewport. This value right here, right click and paste the driver. So now if we change this, you can see changes. So that's that's really cool. And we're going to paste this driver into every single model apart from the accessories. Because the accessories really, we we don't need to add subdivisions to them. I, I like just keeping them like this. Same with the head, I'm also going to add it there. And yeah, and that's the subdivisions done. As you can see, our rig looks a lot smoother, a lot more rounded, a lot nicer. But if you're ever lagging, you can just turn it down to zero that easy all right the next thing that we're going to do now is fix the collections right here since you can see the collections aren't really well done and if we want two of these rigs on the same scene it's going to look it's, it's just going to break so we need to add uh new collections and we need to fix everything so uh let's go into a scene collection and we're going to add a new collection so this will be the name of your rig so call it whatever the new rig is so this is the hazen rig so i'm going to type in hazen rig and I'm going to add in brackets, select this if appending. All right. And I'm going to move, I'm going to hold down on shift. And now I'm going to drag these, these two collections into the Hazen rig, select this if appending. And this one I'm just going to call main, let's call it main rig collection. And the shapes, what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to go and enable these right here in this little torch icon i think it i think mean, whatever this icon is and i'm going to enable these five right here so we can see these icons and what i'm going to do is i'm going to uncheck the shapes i'm going to deselect it and i'm going to turn it off in viewports and i'm going to turn it off in the render so now it will not show at all and i'm going to turn these back off to the defaults in fact i'm going to turn it off completely i'm just in fact i'm going to only show the eye icon so now it can only hide and not and just for a little bit of aesthetic i'm going to change the color to purple and this one to hmm orange fat no yellow yeah yellow is good so there we are our collections have now been fixed now our next thing to finalize our rig is actually i do this a lot for my rigs and i uh change the workspaces so these tabs right here um Layout, modeling, sculpting, UV editing, texture, paint shading, animation, rendering, compositing, generic, you know, scripting, all that. Uh, these are different workspaces. And so I'm going to rename them and reorder them. So for the workspace that I want in my project, I don't want the modeling one. I don't want the sculpting one. I want to keep in the UV editing one. I'm going to remove texture paint and I'm going to remove geometry nodes. And I'm going to keep scripting. And you'll see what I'll do with that. The layout, I'm going to call this rig default just like this and i'm going to keep the rest here although for the shading i'm going to put change your texture here in fact i'm going to actually add some capital letters just so it looks more professional in brackets i'm just going to add shading and i'm going to leave animation as is same with rendering and compositing and for scripting i'm going to change this name by the way for changing names i just double click it notes and so now we've done that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this workspace looks exactly the way I want it to when the person opens the rig. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller, make it a bit more compact, just like the default workspace. And I'm going to change this to the render properties look, although I shouldn't really be doing this since there's one more thing I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to make sure the properties are visible, just like that. I'm going to make sure the last thing I select is the settings mode. We'll be, we'll be like properly doing this once I finish the next thing. And for the notes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this line right here and I'm going to click on join areas and I'm going to make sure 
that this arrow is pointing upwards. Now I'm going to right click between this line, join areas, and I'm going to make it to the left. Now I'm going to right click on this line right here, join areas, and make it go down. And right here, right click, join areas, up, right click, join areas, up. And right here, right click, join areas to the right. So now a scripting is the only thing that people can see. And I'm going to press new and I'm going to call this notes. And in here, I'm going to add hashtag and I'm going to put thanks for downloading this rig. I hope you like it. And I hope with the course, in fact, tutorial series I've made, you can make some, let's put hashtag something just as good as this just as good. in fact let's add just as good or even better than this smiley face now the reason why i added hashtags before everything was that because this is the scripting tab if you run the script it will try and run this text that i've put in but if i've had but if i add hashtags then it completely disables that line of code so make sure whenever you do these notes you have you add a hashtag and i'm going to put right here buy comics Productions. And then I'm going to put under here hashtag June 2023. Now I'm just going to right click on this header right here and uh, uncheck show header. And I'm going to go back to rig default and I'm just going to press control S to save. There we go. Now I did say there was one more thing left, however, I realized I forgot one thing. And we're going to do this before the one thing left, sorry. We're going to add bone groups. So bone groups are pretty much uh, color identifiers. So we're basically going to be adding color to these controllers. So right here in the object data properties, go to the bone groups panel and let's add, we need one for the left and we need one for the right and we need one for the torso and we need one for the head and we need one for the settings. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so five different bone groups and this one will be settings this one will be um head this one will be torso this one will be left this one will be right so for the color of settings what we need to do is just go right here to color uh drop down change it from default to something else so for my color i would want i think purple's good man right? Yeah, let's change it to this. For the head, I want it to be orange is good, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, orange. And for the torso, I'm going to make it green. And for the left, I'm going to make it blue. And for the right, I'm going to make it red. And so now I'm going to select everything on the left. And I'm going to assign it right here to the left bone group. So now it's all blue. And for the right, I'm going to assign it all, all these right bones to the right bone group. And for the torso all of that to the torso bone group and for the head to the head bone group and for the settings to the settings bone group and there we are we've got color actually i'm going to change this to gray it's just, it just looks nicer and so another thing i want to show you is how to pack the textures into the file since uh when people will be using this they won't have the textures so to do this just go to file external data and pack resources and now they're saved with it one thing I want to show you also is attaching arm accessories like this, since we've just left this on its own for now. So first thing I'm going to do is going to go to the object constraint properties, add a child of constraint, make the target, make the target the armature, make the bone the lo left lower arm, and set and click on set inverse, since it might it, it could probably just go crazy. So just click on set inverse. And there you go, moves with it. And I'm gonna add one more bone group and I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna move it all the way up and I'm gonna call it root. And you're about to see what this is in the next thing I show you. And I'm gonna change it, I'm gonna change the color to purple this time. What about no purple? So the final thing I need to show you before your rig is completely done. This is the root bone. So I think some of you guys watching might have thought I forgot but I've forgotten about this, but I haven't. And in fact, it's a very important thing to add this to your rig just because it makes it so much better to have a whole master bone moving everything around. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be, add, we're going to be adding a root bone. Let's go into edit mode, uh, go into wireframe x-ray just so we can see like this and turn off x uh, axis mirror and just add a bone by pressing shift A or 
add single bone. And I'm going to scale it down just like this. And I'm going to call this root. I'm going to go back to solid mode and I'm going to go and open up the shapes collection again. And in here, I'm going to add a star. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll add a plane. And I'm going to hide this again. And I'm just going to hide that. And for the main rig collection in here, for the bone, I'm going to change the bone shape to the plane that we added. And I'm going to change the rotation to 90 degrees, scale it up. And now we have a root bone. And I might even rotate this a bit. I'm going to scale it down a little bit because it's a bit big actually. And I'm going to change the bone group to the root bone group I added. And so how do we make this move everything around? So go into edit mode again. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and get the lower torso, which has been moving everything around. And we're going to select the, we're going to hold down shift and select the root bone last. Press control P on our keyboard, click on keep offset on the pop up that appears. And now this moves everything around. Now we have a root bone moving everything around. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you for watching this huge, huge course. It has taken um, quite a while to make a rig and pause between different parts to create different episodes, blah, blah, blah. I really hope none of my recordings have messed up because then I would just completely give up on everything and never publish this. Um, <laughs> hope you make some amazing rigs with this tutorial series. I might upload some bonus episodes in which I show some more things that might help you. Um, and yeah, I, I really hope this tutorial has inspired you to rig more, to make more Roblox rigs. Because we do, it is true, we need more riggers in the Roblox community. We don't have enough. And, uh... I think we should, I, th I think this tutorial might just be the key to that. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helped you and I will see you next time. Bye.